The David E. Luganville Research Institute for Endangered Species was created as a result of an event that took place in 1951. On July 1, 1951, off the coast of Montauk Point, New York, David Luganville, John Zahner, and Walter Schneider caught a giant leatherback turtle weighing over 1,000 pounds. The turtle was so large, they towed it alongside of their boat. Once they reached the shore, the turtle was loaded onto a truck and brought to their home of Ellington, Connecticut. The men and their catch instantly became celebrities and gained enormous attention from friends, neighbors, and the press. Chris Luganville, president of the Luganville Research Institute for Endangered Species, was only four years old at the time. Little did he know then that one day he would create an institute to help save these sea creatures from extinction. The leatherback turtle, otherwise known as Dermachales coriacea, is the largest sea reptile having the greatest range of habitation from New Zealand to just north of the Arctic Circle. Several years ago, little else was known about this gentle ocean-dwelling creature. Previous information about the leatherback was gathered from its appearances on nesting beaches, tag returns, incidental captures, and stranded individuals. Chris Luganville and the members of the Institute have sponsored several important research projects that have shed light on the mysterious turtle. March 1981 was the beginning of Project Track the Leatherback. This project consisted of attaching a radio location transmitter and a multi-channel temperature sensing sonic transmitter to a leatherback turtle and then tracking the turtle by way of radio signals as it moved in the ocean. Up until these tracking experiments, scientists did not have significant data pertaining to leatherback behavior or physiology. Sea turtle biologist John Kynett from the Virginia Institute of Marine Science and Dr. Robert Shoup from the Department of Zoology at the University of Rhode Island briefly explained the project. The back has been found recently to dive almost to a mile deep, and uh, oh. it's the deepest diving air-breathing vertebrate, and that it has these very long front flippers for getting rid of heat in the hot latitudes where they breed, but they have heat conserving mechanisms for when they go to feed in the cooler areas. One of the prime uh, jellyfish food sources of the leatherback is the Arctic jellyfish or the lion's mane, the big ones you see on the coast. And first of all, they spend most of their time wandering around all night. We thought they would stay still and stay below the surface. In fact, they surface about every seven minutes. And uh, that pattern changed when the sun came out and they began basking, which we were surprised at. John learned that the turtles tested on shore became disoriented and when released into the harbor were able to navigate their way out of the harbor within five hours. He also found that the length of time a leatherback spent at the surface of the water was always less than the amount of time spent submerged beneath the ocean. They were also found to have an average body temperature of 85.1 degrees Fahrenheit while above the water. The air temperature was 71 degrees Fahrenheit. It was found that the leatherback can travel at an average speed of five kilometers or three miles per hour. When pursued by a shark, they have been tracked as fast as 6.1 kilometers or five miles per hour. Further technological advances in marine research have since been funded by the Luganville Research Institute. In May of 1989, the Institute coordinated the first satellite tracking project in the United States in which a satellite transmitter was attached to the back of a large leatherback sea turtle. It was then tracked for 19 days from the U.S. Virgin Islands to an island off the coast of Puerto Rico. Further information from this study is currently being compiled for a soon-to-be-distributed report. The Institute is responsible for more than just tracking turtles by radio and satellite. It is also taking an active role in educating people about the severe problems facing leatherback populations as well as other endangered marine species. Hey, Junior, let's watch some home movies of our leatherback family. Great, Pop. Hey, Junior, there's Uncle Harry. 
Harry's munching on some jellyfish, our favorite snack. Hey, Pop, what's that plastic bag doing in the ocean? Wait a minute. Why is Harry going after the plastic? He's going to choke on it. Well, Junior, people get careless and they throw their garbage into the ocean. Don't people know that we can't tell the difference between plastic and jellyfish? No, Junior. That's why we have to warn people not to throw the plastic into the ocean or on our beaches. Throw plastic in the garbage and not on our beaches. The most significant problem is plastic materials that are improperly disposed of by humans. The turtles have become helpless victims of oceanic contamination generated by human beings. The leatherback turtle's diet consists of jellyfish that are harmful to people. Others consume vast quantities of jellyfish along the coastal areas of Africa, North, Central, South America, and New Zealand. The plastic seen here is in a leatherback feeding area off the coast of Costa Rica. As you can see, pollution is a worldwide problem of devastating proportion. Unfortunately, the turtles cannot tell the difference between plastic bags and jellyfish. Once the turtle consumes the plastic, it becomes lodged in the stomach and intestines, causing a blockage which eventually kills the turtle. This large leatherback turtle was found floating off the coast of England. It weighed 2,016 pounds. Scientists performed a necropsy to determine the cause of death. After opening the turtle's stomach and intestines, the scientists found a large quantity of plastic, causing a blockage to the small intestine, which may have caused the turtle's death. One has to wonder whether the blockage weakened the turtle to the point where it finally drowned. Imagine what it would be like to have a blockage in your own intestines. Pollution is just one problem that human beings are responsible for. The other problem is poaching. During the nesting season, a female leatherback will come ashore nearly five times and lay close to 100 eggs per nest. When she has laid her eggs, she returns to the sea, never coming back to see her hatchlings. The sad and outrageous aspect of this scene is that the leatherback hatchlings may never see the light of day. Poachers seek out the new nests and steal the eggs either to feed their families or to sell at the market as delicacies or aphrodisiacs. This brutal footage of an actual poaching operation illustrates the horrible treatment that marine turtles suffer at the hands of humankind. of pollution and poaching by human beings has devastated the population of leatherback and other sea turtles all over the world. We are the only ones that can prevent the extinction of these gentle sea creatures. You can help by disposing of plastic material properly to people about the dangers of oceanic pollution and how it affects these beautiful creatures of the sea.